All right, there we go. Hello, everybody. Oh, that's probably fine. Well, this is going to be awesome. Um, I don't know if you can see all of these, but um, I've just got a pallet of wine from George Descombe um, in Montreal. And I really need to send out an email newsletter about all of these, so I am just going to open all of them. Just opened all of them, and I'm going to taste through these three different Viavine bottlings from George Descombe. Um, I'll just hold these right now while I'm talking about it, so you can look at these bottles of George Descombe. <laughs> then this baby here. Uh, so George Descombe, uh, Guy in Beaujolais. His father was a vigneron. His father farmed grapes, um, but his father also owned a bottling company. And so, like, they, I think, would go to different... This is a thing that happens in winemaking, actually, relatively commonly. Um, small producers, particularly back in the day, <clears throat> small producers... Uh, wouldn't necessarily have a bottling machine. They wouldn't be able to bottle wine themselves at their winery because it was too expensive to buy all of this equipment, like if you're a really small operation. So companies existed to just have a whole sort of like modern bottling line and um, go from winery to winery and bottle wines for people. So George Descombe, his father, uh, had a company doing that. Which means that George Descombe, along with like actually working in the vines and learning about growing grapes and everything, um, he got to bounce around between different people's cellars in Beaujolais and taste all these different wines in Beaujolais um, back in the early 80s. And one person that he went and visited and tasted their wines when he was bottling their wine was Marcel Lapierre in Morgon. And he had this, he was like, holy crap, these wines are so gorgeous and so pure and lovely, he was like, I want to make wine like this. Um, and because his family made wine, he was in a position to, to do that. So he did. Uh, that's a simplification. But anyway, um, he took over his family's domain in 1988. Um, his father had worked really traditionally, but George like started, you know, got officially certified organic by EcoCert. Um, he no longer is, he felt like, uh, the rules about making organic wine, you can do all kinds of stuff like adding yeast and adding enzymes, and you can do all kinds of, like, really kind of bad from a quality perspective techniques and still have your wine technically be organic, you know, as long as you're not adding chemicals. So... Uh, he farms organically, uh, he's a very natural winemaker, but he's not certified organic anymore. Um, he has about 16 hectares of vines, uh, spread through a bunch of different appellations. Uh, oh geez, if I remember correctly, a lot of Bruy, um, fair amount of Morgon, Renier, and then I think very little Chirubla, maybe like half of hectare. And I don't know if he even owns land in Santa Moore or if it's made from bought vines. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember reading about him actually owning land in Santa Moore. And yet, <clears throat> here I have this Viavine Santa Moore. Oh, also, just for what it's worth, um, his Viavine bottlings don't say Viavine on them anywhere. Uh, they just have a more traditional, classy looking label, different from his non Viavine bottlings, and they come in heavier glass bottles with wax tops. So that is what denotes that this is Viavine. Um, he's got super old vines. All of these bottlings, vines are 50, over 50 years old, but he has vineyards in Bruy that are like over 100 year old vines. Um, he has a lot of really high elevation, very steep hillside vineyards as well. All right, I'm going to start powering through these now because um, that's what I got to do. Oh, Jeez, it's hard. I just opened all of these. They're, obviously, the bottles are open, but I just opened all of them, so I don't know. Uh, they might probably all be a little tight. Uh, all of these, this is going to be cool because all of these have identical winemaking. Um, Hand-harvested... Um, 
semi-carbonic fermentation in 60 hectoliter uh, cement tanks for, I forget how long, a long time, up to a month, I want to say, for a primary semi-carbonic fermentation because it happens at pretty cold temperatures. Um, then it is aged for, a, all of these wines were aged for a year in 228 liter Bordeaux size barrels um, that I would assume are not brand new, but, you know, used of some several year aging, ages. Um, then bottled and aged in the bottle. And so two of these are 2019 and the more gone is 2018. Uh, gosh, I tasted his AOC Morgan and Brewery yesterday and was just in love. <sighs> yeah, what am I doing? What is daddy doing here? You're stuck on my chest and I have this thing that I'm swirling and it looks real interesting. What do you think of the smell? You can't drink it. You can't bite it. You can't gum it. But what do you think of that smell? Smells very floral. Uh, Cherub, Cherub, I don't know how to pronounce it. Cheruble, uh is higher elevation. This in particular is pretty high elevation. Um, so generally makes more like floral, aromatic, really, really pretty expressive wines. This does smell very floral. This does smell like lilacs and roses. And a little bit like lavender. Uh, very pretty, perfumey, pungent, red, purple flowers. Certainly also kind of like very fresh raspberry. Very poised, very elegant. Um, supple, it's supple, but it has great minerality, like slightly crunchy, uh, like salty, slaty sort of granite, granitic, because there's a lot of granite, I think, in all of these, uh, granitic, um, minerality, just a little bit of tannin, like just the right amount of tannin to the finish. That's probably going to be gorgeous later on. Hmm. Yeah. That smells like something that's going to open up and be very, very pretty. Okay, Santa Moore, 2019. Um, Santa Moore is an appellation that <coughs> has a reputation for making more medium bodied, more developed, uh, more age worthy wines, but it's also really a complicated um, Cru Beaujolais because it's, I believe Santa Moore, it's the most northern. Um, so it's actually geologically on the sort of border between Beaujolais and like Burgundy proper, Macon and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of different types of soil here. I want to say there's like, you get alluvial soil, like sand and stuff. Um, some clay and limestone. I know there's calcareous soil in some places. There's granitic soil in some places. Rocky granitic. Um, a lot of different stuff in Santa Moore. So it's a complicated place. I don't know. I mean, from what I read, this comes from granitic soil, but um, I, I will probably do some more diving, deep diving into that tonight as I work on email newsletter. Wow, that's way more pungent and gamey. Whoa. Yeah, that's, this, this tastes, this very much tastes like it needs to open up. What do you think of this aroma, Mac? No, that's, but I, this, I'm actually, I'm surprised you, yeah, this one, this one is way more intense, way more like gamey and earthy right now, but I think it is just, it's maybe like a, it's already opening up. Yeah, I should have let these breathe or something before doing this video. 
That's okay. That's what wine glasses are for. Gamey, woodsy, brambly, blackberry, black cherry. But it's not too, too super ripe. Um, it smells very sort of focused and serious. Dark and sort of inviting. Has a chocolatey component to it. Definitely more tannin than the Chirubla. Um Yeah, it lingers longer. The tannins aren't aggressive, but they just like they're uh, more, they're stronger. Uh, they have more staying power. They linger for longer in this. Has a real crunchy, like acidity, minerally sort of driven like um, edge to it, like in how it in how it opens. It's a very focused wine, a very focused, serious Beaujolais. Delicious though. Mm, a little bit of sediment in there too. All right, sound of more, and now, finally, last up, Morgon, 2018, so one year older. Let's see, how is this now? Wow, completely freaking different. That actually smells really pretty. Like, geez, what is that? It's like pale dried cherries. And strawberries. <clears throat> and it smells floral, but it's not like... <coughs> it's It smells floral, but it's not forceful pungent flowers like roses or lilacs or something like that it's 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 a softer more elegant sort of floral aroma gesundheit 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 yeah i'd never be able to do a wine video like this with baby ned baby ned would just be all over the place and take my phone and just run away with stuff you're so convenient mac Here, what do you what do you think of this? Very different from the others, isn't it? Yeah, this is so much prettier. Which is not like Morgon is su not supposed to. Morgon supp is supposed to be the most serious one. <coughs> That's why you shouldn't believe everything you read. Although. Does have lovely structure. That's gorgeous. That balance of tannin and minerality, granite, and really, really, really pretty like cherry. And blackberry. Also so supple and like uplifting all of these are bright all of these are bright and vivid and uplifting and alive tasting but very precise and like balanced and integrated um they're not vibrant and uplifting and alive in a really like wild like all, all over the place uncontrolled sort of way like these wines are so poised and precise. All of them are very different. They're very different expressions. They have very different personalities. Um, they're all basically the same price. Um, these are so much better for like for the price 
These are so much better, I think, than like any comparably priced Burgundian Pinot Noir. I'm going to get myself in trouble saying something like that. But God, these things, for what they cost, are so good and real. And like, I love wines like this that taste vibrant and alive, but that are so poised and well made. Ugh. God. That's experience. I mean, the guy's been making wine since he was a teenager back in like through the 80s, you know, while I was like a little kid in elementary school and stuff, uh, George Descombe was making, like, learning how to make beautiful wines, and he's still making beautiful wines. Jeez. I mean, that's the thing. That's part of, along with everything else I just said, uh, George Descombe is a link to, like, early initial natural winemaking in Beaujolais. Um, and by extension, like the whole international movement back to wines that are, you know, more honestly made and taste like where they come from. Uh, also he uses very, he uses basically no interventions in the cellar. Um, the one thing he does do is he adds a little bit of sulfur, but he adds, what is it? Something like one milligram per hectoliter, like, like tiny, tiny, almost, you know, hard to um, quantify or uh, hard to measure. He adds so little sulfur to the wines at bottling and that's it. So these are, these are, these are pretty freaking natural. I mean, they, they're semi-carbonic, so it's not like just out there wild fermentation and stuff. Um, so, you know, like they're, so it's semi-anaerobic. Uh, I think they go into cement tanks and the CO2 from the fermentation displaces the oxygen, so it, it goes into anaerobic, um, the yeast goes into anaerobic respiration. But it's not a sealed, sealed tank. Uh, it's not like full-on carbonic maceration, uh, fermentation. This is more traditional, more like how things were done long ago. When the priority wasn't on speeding things up, the priority was just on trying to get a good amount of color and tannin from these Gamay grapes, which have thin skins and not a lot of tannin to them naturally. And so you need some kind of like way to get color and tannin um, and not, not overdo it and still make pretty wines. And it helps that they're in a relatively northern part of France where it is cold. And so naturally in natural cellars, fermentation would stretch out for a longer period of time because of that. Ooh, all right, I'm going to go read more about Beaujolais and go eat some chicken salad with all these delicious Beaujolais and work on an email about how special these are. Um, we just got a palette of mixed up George Descombe stuff, these plus um, AOC, Brewy, and Morgon. It's here now. It's basically it for what I can get for the year. Um, but hey, it's uh, it's the beginning of, beginning of July, so uh, drink these wines, people, because these are... These are uh, these are fire, as the kids say. These are these are really special. Hmm. All right, we're out.